continuing on with what is the most important thing for coaches, uh, uh, it's still part of how you execute a repetition. And, and it's, to me, it's teaching how to reach a high level of intensity. Uh, I've been around many, many, many gyms in the world. And I've seen people who train well, meaning that they do beautiful movement, uh, they do good exercise choices, they are focused and all that stuff, but I've seen very, very few people train hard. Uh, I would say that le less than 10% of the people in most gyms train hard. Uh, and by training hard, I do not mean doing a, a lot of work. Uh, as we saw in some previous capsules, uh, doing too much volume is the number one mistake made by natural trainees. So certainly, I would not equate training a lot with training hard. Training hard is being able to push your work set to the limit, reaching a point where you absolutely cannot move the weight by yourself. Uh, some people fake themselves out. As soon as they start to feel a burn or it's really hard, then they think that their, their brain shut down and they stop moving. In reality, they probably have two or three more reps in them. Those who train really hard go the extra mile getting those last two or three reps in a set. Uh, even getting four reps, having a partner help you get those reps. Now, that is one aspect of training that changed a lot in my training. I used to be more, of course, I was more performance oriented. So I was doing more Olympic lifts, explosive movement. Of course, the, in these movements, you do not want to go to the point where you can't barely move the weight. Uh, but ever since I focused more on building muscle mass, I came to the conclusion that if you want that training to be truly effective, you have to push your work set at the utmost level of intensity, meaning until you can't move the weight by yourself. In fact, personally, the way I train uh, is you, I always go to the point of not moving the weight, then my partner will help me get two or three more, just to make sure that I have the highest level of intensity. I could also use other methods like rest pause. I go until I can't lift the weight anymore, then I would rest 10 seconds and try to get two or three more reps. That's another way to make sure that you have a higher level of intensity. Of course, if you are training at that level of intensity, from my experience, if you're natural, especially if you're natural, you can only do one such set per exercise. So the way I do things is normally I have three sets per exercise when training for muscle mass. The first set will be like 10 reps, and it's a level of effort of maybe five or six on a scale of 10. So it's certainly not demanding just to get blood flowing inside the muscle, getting the feeling for the movement, getting the right muscle contraction program, just practicing good form, good contraction. The second set would be heavier, sets of eight, probably like a scale of, of eight, of seven or eight on a scale of 10. So pretty demanding, but not to the point where I can't move the weight. So probably have one or two reps left in the tank. Then that last set, I would get six to eight reps by myself. That will set will be a 10 on 10 on a scale, uh, 10 on a scale of 10. So I'm really pushing to my limit. And then my partner will help me get two or three more repetition. Uh, just to make sure that that set was to the limit. Now that's only one set. Any more than that, in my opinion, you can't really recover from it. And also there's a different mindset if you only have that one set. You know that that's all you can do for that exercise. So it programs you to give it all you've got. I think that most people instinctively scale down their intensity if they know they have to do three, four, or five work sets. They won't go to the limit because they know they have a few more sets to get. So in my opinion, the most important things, if you're natural, in one maximum gains. First is you have to train with the maximum possible intensity. Because you want to trigger protein synthesis with as little work as possible. So if I'm 
doing one all-out crazy set, I will trigger mTOR protein synthesis optimally for that exercise. More so than if I did three or four exercises that are eight or nine on a scale of 10. But I'm burning a lot less fuel to get things done. Basically, think of yourself. How can I do each set in a way that I need the least amount of work to get maximum stimulation? Because remember, the number one enemy of natural training is doing too much volume. How can I keep volume as low as possible while getting maximum stimulation? And the only answer is making sure that those work sets are done at the highest possible level of effort. That's the only way that you can make sure that even with a very low amount of work, you get maximum stimulation. So that's one thing that a coach needs to teach to their client, the capacity to go to their limit. Because most people can get here, whereas their limit is here. Here it starts to get painful. Here it, the movement starts to be really hard to do. Here you barely can move the weight, and here you fail. Most people will stop here. Some stop here. You have to teach them to work toward here. If they don't know where their limit is, they won't be able to reach that limit or get close to it by themselves. So as a coach, first you need to teach them what is the proper way to do the rep, rep style. Then you need to make sure that they are using the right type of muscle contraction, respecting the, all the principles of muscle contraction. Then you want to make sure that they are training at the highest possible level of intensity while still maintaining proper form, meaning targeting the stress on, on the proper muscle. If you can do that, that is the biggest gift you can give to your client. Because from now on, everything they do will work. Whereas if they don't do that properly, nothing will work.